Let's get it. Mike Semper, VV here with you for the next hour talking about professional wrestling, which is something we do every single day here on the Sports Byline Broadcasting Network. Tune in, iHeart, American Forces Radio, sportsbyline.com, over-the-air affiliates like KMAV, 99KMSR, WYOH, and many more podcasts, replays on Sirius XM. Maybe you're video streaming on Twitch or YouTube. However you're joining me today, I'd just like to say thank you. Hopefully, wherever you are, it's sunny outside. If not, hopefully it's sunny inside your mind. Getting ready for a big old nor'easter here to ruin my Saturday. But uh, it could be worse things in life. If you're a wrestling fan who needs action all the time, well, sorry. This is as close as you're going to come to having a weekend off. There is no rampage tonight. There is no collision on Saturday due to the NCAA men's basketball tournament. No premium live events from anybody as well either, which leaves SmackDown tonight as the biggest thing taking place over the next couple of days. And I'll let you know what they have planned for tonight. Also, WWE has issued some press releases today, letting everybody know where their pop-up shop is going to be, as well as the fact that the Slammies are returning. Yes, the Slammy Awards are going to be back. I'll let you know what's going on there. Filthy Tom Lawler, not here with me today. He's in Cleveland, Ohio, I believe, for AIW. Hot in Cleveland, Filthy Tom Lawler is. And uh, I'm sure we're going to get a full report on that come next Monday when he rejoins Brian Alvarez for Filthy Four Daily for members of the website. Ring of Honor now has three matches that have been made official for Super Card of Honor after last night's ROH show that saw Billy Starks and Queen Amanada advance in the ROH Women's World Television Championship Tournament. I'd like to apologize for those of you out there who... Our stay unspoiled throughout the week. Brian and I kind of let everybody know what the finals were going to be yesterday. I still disagree with him. We open it up for calls? Maybe. Eh, maybe not. Wrestling Observer Live. Yo, Mike Semper, VB here with you. You know, we do this show right here for an hour at a time every single day. But if you want us 24-7, you can find us on Twitter slash X. I'm at Semper VB. Filthy Tom Lawler is at Filthy Tom Lawler. Brian Alvarez, no surprise, at Brian Alvarez. The website is at W-O-N-F-4-W. And the broadcaster is at Sports Byline USA. Jim Valley and Andrew Zarian can be found on Twitter as Jim Valley and Andrew Zarian. Jim's going to be with you on Saturday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern Time. And Andrew Zarian is here with you on Sundays at 6 p.m. Eastern Time. I'd also like for you to make the wrestling news part of your day. Everything you need to know to get your day started, get you up to date, or get you to your favorite wrestling review pod like Wrestling Observer Radio. Each episode of the wrestling news is between 5 and 15 minutes long every single day of the year and is usually posted at about 9 a.m. Eastern time. No clickbait, no speculation or rumors, just the wrestling news. You can find it wherever you find your favorite podcast or head on over to thewrestlingnews.com and at Wrestling News. AV on Facebook and Twitter. As I mentioned, no rampage tonight, no collision tomorrow. WWE, all of the spotlight this weekend. Fox tonight, the Pfizer Forum in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. How dumb is Cody Rhodes? We're going to find out tonight. Cody Rhodes will meet with Roman Reigns, supposedly one-on-one in the middle of the ring. On Raw, Paul Heyman came out and told Cody that if he showed up alone tonight, that Roman would also show up alone tonight. Hmm. Let's see. A lot of things could take place off of that. Could we see an attack by somebody other than the bloodline? Say, debuting Tamatanga. I guess that could be possible. Will we see the bloodline just go ahead and jump out there and attack Jimmy Uso and Solo Sokoa? Because Seth Rollins and Jey Uso happened to be there. Jey Uso did tell Cody that he was going to be there, although Cody said he wants to deal with this on his own. But 
that seems to match up pretty well, especially if The Rock is not going to be there and there has been no word on him showing up. So if he does, it is going to be a surprise tonight. Seriously doubt he is going to since they have advertised Roman Reigns for this evening and probably whatever happens tonight can continue to play into whatever is going to happen with Roman Reigns and The Rock down the road. I saw in the uh, Twitch chat a little bit earlier on, I guess Roman Reigns was on Pat McAfee today. I'm not sure what he said there, but I'm sure he was taking shots at everybody and, and probably sent a couple of subtle ones at uh, at his cousin, uh, who is, uh, again, he did say, he did acknowledge him as the tribal chief, but has never acknowledged Roman Reigns as the head of the table also tonight on the show, Rey Mysterio against Santos Escobar. And last week, Dragon Lee got about two minutes. Uh, <laughs> Santos he got about two minutes before that match ended up getting thrown out. And Rey Mysterio came down to make the save. Hopefully, this sets up whatever they're going to do for WrestleMania. Hair versus mask still seems like it would be a good stipulation. I, I, then again, we are... Also, what, two, three weeks away here from WrestleMania, so mm, I would probably want to build that one up a little bit more, but it's possible that it could happen. One thing is for sure, I can't believe we're not going to get some sort of Mysterio Escobar match, and I hope it's one-on-one. -on -one. In qualifiers tonight for the World Tag Team Title Six-Pack Challenge ladder match at WrestleMania, the OC, Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson will face off against Grayson Waller and Austin Theory, and the Street Profits face off against the Authors of Pain. Those two matches are kind of interesting because on paper, just looking at it, even though they have been beaten up repeatedly by Randy Orton and Kevin Owens, Grayson Waller and Austin Theory are two guys that I would think WWE would want to have and want to showcase in a match like that. With that said, we have pretty much nothing but babyface tag teams other, other than the Judgment Day that are going to be involved in that match. The OC, a lot of experience. Luke Gallows, Carl Anderson. Carl Anderson has been in lots of these types of situations before. It's going to be interesting to see, do they want to go ahead and rely on, on those guys, or do they want to go with Waller and Theory? Because Waller and Theory, in theory, don't really have to be in this match, and they could probably do something on the undercard of one of the two nights that could maybe showcase them more. The Street Profits and Authors of Pain is interesting to me just because I don't think either team is going to ultimately make it into that match. I guess you could have a Bobby Lashley one-on-one -on -one match with Karrion Cross, or a mixed tag team match with Bobby Lashley and B-Fab against Karrion Cross and Scarlett. To me, I would rather just keep those units together, the AOP and Karrion Cross. The Street Profits and Bobby Lashley, you can involve the two women. I would rather just see them go at it and kind of get this feud over with and get everybody on to something else. Bailey will be at the show tonight. She ended up last night at the Milwaukee Bucks game. And during the second quarter of the game, she was introduced to the live crowd. She joined the Bucks mascot, whose name is Bango. And they introduced the flex cam together. And this appearance has now been hyped up locally. The Milwaukee Journal had a story on it. And granted, these are all fluffy stories, but at least they're being talked about. At least WWE social media is retweeting the Pfizer forum and retweeting Bailey. Last Friday, I told you that Swerve Strickland would be appearing at Rolling Loud, which took place in, in SoCal last weekend. He was supposed to be there with Flash Garments. I was wondering maybe that the, the, the set get like trimmed, did it get canceled or something like that, because we never heard anything else about it. Well, it did take place. I saw an interview earlier on today with Swerve and Flash Garments on Power 106 out of Los Angeles. So they were there. You just wouldn't have known it. And why they didn't hype that up on social media this week, why they didn't say anything, even in passing on Dynamite, I do not know. And that's something that w AEW really does need to get better at, is really fluffing up these appearances that your talent makes in other locations. Again, giving 
the impression that these guys are bigger men and women are bigger stars than what they are. <laughs> you know, that's what you should be doing as far as promoting these folks. So I'm surprised that didn't happen. But again, you have a situation like Bailey just going to do the flex cam with the mascot at the Milwaukee Bucks game. And that gets far more attention than Swerve Strickland. You know, that's something that AEW really does need to figure out. WWE is also on the road this weekend, as they usually are leading into WrestleMania, the Road to WrestleMania house show. So if you're in Illinois, you, you got a chance to see a lot of WWE coming up over the next couple of days. They're going to be at the Bank of Springfield Center in Springfield, Illinois, on Saturday and on Sunday at the BMO Harris Bank Center in Rockford, Illinois. Come Monday, Raw will be at the Allstate Arena in Chicago, surely. CM Punk is going to be making an appearance. Surely going to be saying something to Drew McIntyre if they cross paths, since Drew McIntyre keeps bringing up CM Punk's name. And we obviously know the dynamic there with Seth Rollins as well. J.D. McDonough and Dominic Mysterio is the only thing so far that I've seen that's been announced for Raw coming up. The WrestleMania lineup, as we know it so far, nine matches are official Night one, Roman Reigns and The Rock against Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins. On night two, Roman Reigns against Cody for the Universal title. Those matches are set. Rollins against McIntyre for the world title is also on the table right now. We just need a night for it. As are Rhea Ripley and Becky Lynch for the women's world title. EO Sky against Bailey for the WWE world women's title. Why one of these titles is not named the Universal Women's title, I have no idea. Gunther against Sami Zayn for the Intercontinental title. Logan Paul against Randy Orton and Kevin Owens for the United States title in a triple threat. Jay Uso against Jimmy Uso. LA Knight against AJ Styles. And of course, that six-pack ladder match for the Undisputed Tag Team title. They are talking about having 16 matches, eight matches for each night. That is the rumor. So we need seven more. We can take a look at what may be occurring on WrestleMania, as well as all of the other news today when we get back from break. Wrestling Observer Live. Show Mike Sempervivi, Wrestling Observer Live, Sports Byline Broadcasting Network, sitting here solo today. Don't know where the boss man Brian Alvarez is. Probably fielding phone calls from Granny right now, as what happens every April. Where is the young and the restless? I know, Granny. I got to deal with this with my wife every year as well, too. It's the men's NCAA basketball tournament, okay? The Y and the R is going to be back at some point. What's even more confusing for Brian is he's got no idea what Granny is talking about. He's got no idea about the NCAA women's uh, or men's basketball tournaments. And I saw DJ Convoy a little bit earlier on today in the chat. He's probably got no idea who Queen Aminata is either. I mean, let's, you know, maybe. Uh, I, I, I'm not sure, but... <laughs> Back to WrestleMania for a minute. Eight matches on each night. That's what they're talking about, at least. And we have nine with the ones that I went over. We need seven more of them. Again, I think one of those matches is going to be Rey Mysterio Jr. against Santos Escobar. I mean, it could be a mixed person match. You could do that so you could get Legato and LWO on the show as well, too. We'll see. I would kind of rather see a one-on-one -on -one match. I, th I think it's going to be AOP and Karrion Cross with Scarlett against the, the Street Profits and Bobby Lashley with BFAB. I just don't want to see this feud continue anymore. I'd like to see the Street Profits do something. I'd like to see Bobby Lashley do something that is not over with those three. It's just the AOP and Karrion Cross is not an act that has worked for me so far. Cross and Scarlett did not work for me before in the first run around. The AOP, I was kind of okay with. But right, again, right now, everybody is just treading water for the time being. To me, that is the best match you can have. And again, it takes another one off the ledger. WWE Women's Tag Team Title Match. I... I wonder how this is going to go. Look, Kyrie Sane and Asuka. Asuka is hurt right now or was banged up with her knee. Uh, so, But it is possible that if Asuka is going to miss the match or needs to be out, that Dakota Kai can fill in that spot. The way the angle has been going, Naomi came out, made the save for Bailey. Naomi and Bianca have kind of been into it because Naomi hadn't been here. She had been over in TNA. 
Bianca told her. You don't know what Bailey's been doing. You don't know how she went after her. Because there is no clear path right now for a Bianca match, Is will it be Naomi and Bianca that face off against Kyrie Sane and Asuka for the tag titles? That could make some sense. Then from there, for the other three matches, or the other four matches, Nia Jax and Jade Cargill? I know on paper that doesn't sound good, and it certainly wouldn't go long, but you could do some sort of multi-person match because you have so many women, the Liv Morgans and Caden and Katana and Natalia and on and on, Tiffany Stratton, where they have not had anything announced for them, and it doesn't look like there's any angles or, or stories that are re really leading into anything. They're the one story of Indy Hartwell and Candice LeRae uh, against Maxine and, and Ivy Nile. It just doesn't, doesn't seem to me, feel to me like it's a WrestleMania match that they would bother with. I could be dead wrong about that, but I have a feeling we're going to see a multiple, multiple woman match that we'll see Nia Jax and Jade Cargill probably face off at the end. And then from there, you got three more matches where Chad Gable, you know, he's been involved in the story with Sami Zayn, telling Sammy he can't win. He's been disappointed. Well, we have something with Chad Gable. Otis and Tazawa aren't doing anything. I guess you could put them in some sort of match, but I have a feeling if it's Chad Gable, look, and I don't know if Brock Lesnar is coming back. I would not advise WWE to have Brock Lesnar come back. Maybe they will, maybe they won't. I don't know. But if you are going to bring him back, as I said, I think it was a couple of days ago on the show, that would be a match for Chad Gable to have as long as Chad Gable can go ahead and go over that way. Speaking of, of, of legends, if you consider Brock Lesnar one, uh, there's going to be a couple of others involved with WrestleMania 40. This was posted up to the front page of the site by Josh Nason earlier on today. In the newest edition of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, Dave Meltzer reports that the belief right now is that Stone Cold Steve Austin, The Undertaker, and John Cena will be appearing at the event in some form. Dave wrote that nothing is official, but the belief right now is that Austin, Undertaker, and Cena will have something at WrestleMania. At press time, there is no creative locked in for Cena and Austin at this moment. Or if there is, it is a well-guarded secret. A lot depends on how much they are willing to do and money, because... It always comes down to money. So so basically cash and creative is what this all comes down to. Cena is free, but depending on what acting stuff he has, that will determine how much he can or cannot do for insurance reasons. For insurance reasons, Austin and Undertaker would be based on the willingness that they have. Cena has repeatedly teased appearing at this year's WrestleMania during recent media appearances that he has done. He wrestled in a match last year at WrestleMania 39, losing in the first match of night one to Austin Theory, uh, going after Theory's United States title. Austin has not appeared at a WrestleMania since Kevin Owens in that match at WrestleMania 38, which was the same WrestleMania where The Undertaker was inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame. So all three of those men look like they will have some sort of presence on the show. WWE Today, for all of those of you who are going to Philadelphia, they have announced their pop-up store location. According to a press release, the store will be located at the Philadelphia Convention Center in Hall B. That's in Center City, Philadelphia, about 15 minutes or so north of the stadiums. It's where WWE is setting up all of its WWE World deal that is now replaced WrestleMania Access. The store is going to be open from Thursday, April 4th through Monday, April 8th. They also announced today, taking place at that event, that the Slammies will be making their return on Sunday, April 7th. It will be a live broadcast of the show. It is going to be hosted by Big E and Kathy Kelly and will stream on WWE's YouTube channel and other social media platforms. 
I would assume if this is going to be live on Sunday, it is going to be the pre-pre-show, unless it's going to be uh, hemmed into the, the pre-show at some point and weaved in there at some point, uh, is going to take place. And it, the last time it has taken place was in, in 2020. Uh, the awards for an old guy like me, you know, kind of sort of meant something way back in the in the day. They had the, the the one from Baltimore, I believe it was, and then they did one from Atlantic City. I think the second one they called the 37th Annual Slammy Awards, was produced by Kayfabe, that ended with everybody on stage singing, If You Only Knew What I Was Going To Do To You. I have got to get that into the mix here as far as some of the music that we play going in and out of segments. Uh, the categories and the nominees for the Slammy Awards have not been revealed yet. WWE notes that fan voting will be open soon. And the official name of the award show is the 2024 Slammys, the Fans Choice Awards. So take that, Nickelodeon. It's now WWE's time to take the fans' choices. Not uh, my choice uh, would be having a Continental Classic Championship but Tony Khan likes it, and he has cleared up the status of the Continental Crown, sort of. This was posted up to the main page of the site by Josh earlier on today in an interview with Comic Book Nation that debuted before Dynamite on Wednesday. Khan said that whoever holds the title after November's annual Full Gear pay-per-view will get an automatic spot in the Classic, However, the title holder will have to win the tournament final at December's World End pay-per-view in order to keep their championship. Khan also reiterated during the interview that the rules around the Continental title will remain the same, no interference, and no one allowed at ringside. On Wednesday, Kazuchika Okada defeated Eddie Kingston to become the Continental Crown title holder, the second ever. And it's not official yet, I don't believe. Maybe it is, but Okada is going to be facing off against Pac at AEW Dynasty on April 20th. I like the idea of the Continental Classic as a winter tournament. I do, as their mini G1, their G1 Lite, whatever you want to call it, I'm good with it. I think it's a completely superfluous title when you factor in all of the other championships that they have. And I dislike the approach for belting somebody up for winning it, as opposed to just using that victory in other ways, like they do with the New Japan Cup or the G1, where the winner gets a shot at the IWGP World Heavyweight Championship. To me, that would make the most sense. I don't like this idea. It goes back to the original IWGP title every year New Japan would hold a tournament and Ricky Choshu would win it one year Inoki would win it one year Vader would win it the next year then they would just throw the belt up vacate it again put it back in the tournament and they got tired of doing that and they ended up just with an IWGP World Heavyweight Championship and I'm good with that. And I wish AEW would do the same thing. It just kind of muddies the waters right now. Unless they plan on merging the Continental title and the International title together, which doesn't look like it's going to be the case right now because Roderick Strong has that title and he just got it and it's leading in and playing into storylines that I'm sure they are going to continue to have with the United Kingdom, possibly even down the line, Kyle O'Reilly and, Ro and Roderick Strong facing off for that title. But again, I, I just wish this title would somehow kind of go away and I wish they would go ahead and use that tournament just as a contender's tournament, just as a big prize that you can go ahead and cash in later on down the line. Speaking of cashing in, we got some commerce to do. That's what that music means. Commercials on their way, and then we'll be back on Wrestling Observer Live. TV here solo with you, Wrestling Observer Live. Ring of Honor. I apologized at the beginning. I'm sure there was somebody out there that heard Brian and I talking about Queen Amanata and talking about there being too many titles and AEW and bringing up the fact there is going to be another one, the ROH World Women's Television Championship. Can talk about it completely. I thought it was nuts when the NWA did this and they have their title, the Women's TV Title Tournament. And it was like, why? Why do we need this? Especially for Ring of Honor that, you know, doesn't have TV. 
I just maybe they're planning on it. I don't I don't know. But Billy Starks defeated Mercedes Martinez. Queen Amanada defeated Red Velvet. Those are the two people that Brian and I were talking about. You know, Billy Starks has been there basically since day one there as a. Uh, as the minion to Athena, they have had some crazy matches. It probably, I mean, for the time, depending on how you want to look at this, yeah, I guess it is time for Billy Starks maybe to win a championship here, but I'd like to see Queen Amanada get it and continue to maybe stay off television. And I know people, why would you want her to stay off television? Because I think she's got a lot of potential. And I think... Much like Athena, who I've always thought has had a lot of potential, I think she is raising her stock, not being on AEW TV, and continuing to do everything she can on ROH, continuing to work with every type of person there, continuing to work with a lot of people on the come-up. And for Aminata, I think that would be the best case as well, too. Why be on AEW TV if you're going to be on one week? They hype you up, you lose, you disappear for a while, they bring you back. Again, it just to me... Being there consistently in Ring of Honor, even though not a whole lot of people are seeing it, that is probably going to be the best way to go. At least I feel. So I would belt up Queen Aminata. I would have her feud with Billy Starks. I would have her get a title shot coming up with Athena and try to roll some people in there. Hey, you know, you got this deal with stardom that we haven't seen much out of. We've seen more women from... AEW or Ring of Honor go to Marvelous or go work Tokyo Joshi Pro than we have working with Stardom. Now, that looks to be changing here with Mariah May and Willow Nightingale. Mariah May going back, Willow Nightingale going, I believe, for the first time. She's always worked Tokyo Joshi Pro. They have Stephanie Vacair, who really, obviously, is a, a CMLL wrestler. But those three, along with Zaya Brookside, you know, are going to be doing some Stardom stuff. So I would love to see Aminata is a great example of somebody that really could use going over to stardom. I know I'm pretty sure she's been over to Japan before and have to check cage match to see exactly when it was. But her going over, working with a Starlight Kid, working with a Maika, working with a Saya Kamatani, working with some of these other women, I think would not only help her, would help any woman that goes over and works. TNA, as I mentioned, Zaya Brookside. Wrestling for TNA. They have television tapings coming up this weekend, both tonight and Saturday at the 2300 Arena in Philadelphia. Josh Alexander against Tracy Williams and Alex Shelley against Nick Nemeth. Alex Shelley against Nick Nemeth is going to kick a lot of ass. Alexander and Williams is going to be great, too. That's going to be uh, a little bit more for the diehards, but I think Alex Shelley and Nick Nemeth could be great. Uh, going to be a bunch of other matches coming up this weekend, too. A triple threat match with Kushida against Mike Bailey against Ace Austin. Hard for that one to believe that that's not going to be good. Trent Seven against Moose, Steve Macklin, Kevin Knight. A Monsters Ball match between PCO and Khan. Zaya Brookside will be wrestling. And I, you know, this is nothing against the former Dana Brooke, but Ash by Elegance is her name now. And she'll be facing off against Brookside, uh, as well as Hammerstone and Tasha Steeles against Jordan Grace and Josh Alexander last night on Impact. Uh, Jordan Grace wiped out Tasha Steeles. And so that's going to lead into this tag team match. And all of these matches will ultimately lead into the TNA Rebellion pay-per-view that's going to be taking place on April 20th in Las Vegas. Full Metal Mayhem match, Frankie Kazarian against Eric Young. TNA X Division title match, Mustafa Ali against Jake Something, who qualified in a five-person match last night on Impact. So he will be facing off against Mustafa Ali. TNA World Tag Team title, The System, uh, which is Brian Myers and Eddie Edwards alongside Alicia Edwards defending against Speedball Mountain which is not an old nickname of John Belushi. That is Speedball Mike Bailey and Trent Seven. And then a TNA world title match, Moose against Nick Nemeth is what we got planned for that. Uh, Nemeth, your IWGP international champion or whatever they're calling that goofy belt, the U.S. title. Too many belts, but I'm going to sound like Alvarez if I, if I complain about that. But I'd like to see... Nemeth, go ahead and add that TNA world title to his collection. 
they again i've talked about this a lot i don't know where moose could really go but he really could use to get out of there a little bit they got him now with the system with myers and edwards as a group he really could stand to go somewhere else for a little bit while, a while and let with let's see nemeth actually you know as the tna world champion who can certainly again no offense to moose certainly have better matches than moose could against a greater variety of opponents got to get to this good news you know and again it's it's sad in that she had to go through all of this stuff but a, a very happy that everything looks to be okay now maurice mizanin is in good spirits as she recovers from a total hysterectomy according to an instagram post she made on thursday the former wwe star says that she is now tumor free after the procedure which was needed after receiving a rare pre-cancer diagnosis on february 10th the 41 year old revealed that she had been diagnosed with serous borderline tumors by dr thias aliabadi probably absolutely ruining that name but dr aliabadi found and removed 11 implants around the uterus ovaries and connective tissue maurice also mentioned having lymph nodes removed in her abdomen and having those checked which, which thankfully revealed that the cancer had not spread in her instagram post maurice wrote quote just to give you an idea of the rarity there are seven cases per million women in the u.s every year the fact that we not only found this but found this at a manageable stage is unbelievable and literally saved my life as this would have ended up mo most likely being lethal next i will continue to rest following my surgery and then we'll follow up with specialists at md anderson in houston maurice was suffering from stomach distension and suffering from other issues kept going to get checked out everybody kept saying we're not finding anything we're not seeing anything maybe it'll go away whatever it is we'll keep checking on it but she finally found a doctor that was able to discover what she had going on and apparently it is the type of cancer that is very tough to find if they can get it early like they did here good but if they don't it apparently spreads very very fast and can be very very destructive so all the best to maurice all the best to the miz and their entire family and hopefully she has a very quick recovery the cauliflower alley club is announced their newest inductee for later on this year a couple of days ago they announced that they are giving their lucha award to the longtime great and wrestling observer newsletter hall of famer negro casas well sting has been announced as this year's 2024 recipient of the iron mike mazurki award which is the highest honor bestowed by the cauliflower alley club according to the according to the announcement the award quote recognizes not only his in-ring prowess but also his dedication to the wrestling community and his positive impact on the lives of fans around the world end quote uh, last year's Iron Mike Mazurki Award went to CM Punk. Other past recipients have included Steve Austin, Ivan Koloff, Stu Hart, Killer Kowalski, Terry Funk, Harley Race, Bret Hart, Jesse Ventura, and Lou Thez. The CAC Awards will be handed out at the 58th Annual Cauliflower Alley Club Reunion and Banquet at the Plaza Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas in August. At some point, I'm going to make it out to that event. I would really like to go to that. Again, 58 years old now and initially started in Southern California uh, as a way to help support old boxers and old wrestlers and help recognize them over the years. It has basically become an all-professional wrestling event where it's absolutely amazing at the people that you will see there and it is one of those times it is one of those very rare times that you will see a cross of a lot of different people that work for a lot of different companies who don't have to worry about the politics for that day at least you would hope they don't have to worry about the politics for that day and with vince mcmahon being gone hopefully we won't have to worry about those types of politics ever again game changer wrestling taking place this weekend they have two shows coming up, both of which are streaming on Triller TV. On Saturday night, they return to Harpo's Theater in Detroit for their role model show. Uh, some of the matches on that show, Matt Cardona against Danhausen, Jacob and Zilla Fatu against Bang and Matthews, Joey Janela 
with Missy Hyatt. You would have to watch last week's shows to find out what was going on there. But Joey Janela and Missy Hyatt facing off against Shane Mercer. I have a feeling this is leading to Joey Janela winning the GCW title from Blake Christian. I don't think I want that. I don't think I want Joey Janela's GCW champion. Uh, I could be wrong about that. But GCW tag team title match. Violence is forever. Dominic Greeny and Kevin Koo will face John Wayne Murdoch and Reed Bentley. And a GCW world title match between Blake Christian and Sawyer Wreck. That's the Saturday show. Sunday, they travel to Rochester, New York, where they'll run the Water Street Music Hall. <laughs> this is a match that is actually happening, folks. Mance Warner against Microman. Which, if you've seen Mance Warner recently in the ring... He has turned up the violence j just a smidge. So him wrestling a mini from Mexico? Eh, let's see what happens there. Cole Radrick against Kevin Blackwood. Billy Starks against Marcus Mathers. That actually should be kind of fun. Starks and Mathers. Gringo Loco and Oni El Bendito against Jacob and Zilla Fat 2. Bunch of other matches on there as well, including Broski Jimmy. Jimmy Lloyd against Nick Wayne. Uh, Cheech and Colin Delaney. Cheech and Colin Delaney. It's going back a couple different generations there against Charles Mason and Richard Holiday alongside Pero and the GCW, another GCW tag team title match. Carini and Kevin Koo, if they retain on Friday, face off against Danhausen and Nick Gage. We'll see if Nick Wayne uh, and Blake Christian can, can make it on time. Tonight, they are in Tijuana, Mexico for the Crash promotion. Uh, which is, uh, if I recall correctly, a rich businessman that just runs shows when he feels like it and has got his own titles. Well, Wayne and Christian will be in together in a cruiserweight title four-way against Destiny, who is the champion, and Aramis. There's a couple other matches, including Dr. Wagner Jr. and Galino Del Mal against the Gates of Agony. So Bishop Khan and Toa Leona going down to Mexico, I believe, for the first time. Also the first time Nick Wayne has wrestled in Mexico. The main event for the show is a six-man tag team match between Roosh, Doralistico, Ray Oris against Bestia666, Black Taurus, and Rey Scorpion. So that's what's going to be taking place there. A couple other t uh, matches listed as well. And also CMLL tonight, their Friday night weekly show inside Arena Mexico, which is available for subscribers to the CMLL YouTube channel. They're running a Torneo Increíbles de Parejas tournament. Yes, I think I said that correctly. Also on the show, Rocky Romero teams with Niebla Roja and Angel de Oro to face Flip Gordon, Mistico, and Volador Jr., be back to put a bow on this thing in just a few minutes. Wrestling Observer Live. Welcome back to the show. Mike Sempervivi here. Wrestling Observer Live. I see you in the Twitch chat. I see you. Y'all want me to bury Goldberg, don't you? That F word I can't say on the air. Not not unless I was Brian Alvarez or Tony Khan. I can't I can't say that. And I don't know. Do, do I want to say F Goldberg? I don't think I do because I don't really care about Goldberg. And he had some comments on the Tim Green Nothing Left Unsaid podcast where he's apparently very conspiratorial. Uh, <laughs> this is up on the website for those who want to read it, including a link to the podcast, if you so choose. But appearing on a, as a guest on the podcast, Goldberg spoke about Asuka setting a new record for the most consecutive matches undefeated as he arrived in WWE for his second run in 2016. And apparently this is a conspiracy. He says, quote, well, a girl beat my winning streak, beat my undefeated streak. I, I can't even remember. Asuka, and apparently he mispronounced her name. So Asuka was her name some Japanese girl and they touted her as being the one to have the longest winning streak. And it just so happens that that culminated when I got there, right? A little later on, Goldberg also spoke conspiratorially about the proliferation, as it's written here by Ethan Runner, of wrestlers using the spear. Quote, and it just so happened that every single wrestler uses the spear in their moves, right? Pretty ironic that it happened when I got there, right? No, dummy. It's fake. It's always been fake. And that's how you get people over in the same way the WCW got your sorry ass over for so long. <sighs> Have your last match and go away, man. 
Like, seriously. Like, I have no animus personally towards this guy. Everybody says he's charitable, he's wonderful, all that sort of stuff. I have to deal with him in the wrestling realm. And the fact that I still have to deal with him after all these years is just pretty much annoying at this point. But shout out to Tim Green, who's recovering from ALS. He is a hero, former Atlanta Falcon. I got to get out of here, everybody. I want to thank all of you out there for watching and listening. Thank you, Producer John. Thank you, Producer and Engineer Daniel. We shall talk to you again after a while. <laughs>